He rules over the kingdoms of men. He's a great I am. He's the I am that I am. Celebrate and give him glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. Shall we all lift up our two hands and ask God for a raw impartation of his power tonight? Would you ask God for that? Give me an encounter with your power tonight. Jesus, give me an encounter with your power tonight. Everybody pray. Give me an encounter with your power tonight. Give me an encounter with your power tonight. Give me an encounter with your power tonight. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are gathered at, in your presence and at your feet. Jesus, grant everyone worshiper tonight under the sound of my voice, both on Grand here and at our videos being centers and around the world, a raw encounter with your power. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. Engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for conquest. Let me start by saying, no one can be empowered on your behalf. You can't run your car on the foil that is in your wife's car. Every car that must be on the road must be foiled. must be foiled. Please give us some of your oil because our oil is finished. He said, go to them that say and buy for yourself. Empowerment is an individual responsibility. Nobody can be empowered on behalf of another. Matthew 25, 8 and 9. The foolish virgins washed their foil, exhausted. And they went to the wise, give us some of your oil in our lamps. They said, no, let's be insufficient for both of us. Go to them that say, and buy for yourself. When the Holy Ghost came in the upper room, it sat on each one of them, clothing tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. I can't run on your foil. You can't run on my foil. Everybody has to go to foil. Everybody. That's very important. I can't run on your faith. And you cannot run on my faith. The judge shall live by his faith. Habakkuk 2 4. And we're talking about conquest. We're talking about empowered faith, raw empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Everybody has to look for it. That's why you find a church, some are winning, some are losing, and the same church. Somebody's interested in what makes it work, another one is just enjoying the environment. Some may never have prayed or fasted in their life for empowerment. They are hanging for, on somebody's empowerment to liberate them and make them more than conqueror. It never happens. You have a church of 1,000 people. You have people in 1,000 different classes. You have a church of 10,000 people. You have 10,000 classes represented. Please, let 
Let's take responsibility. Let us take responsibility so we don't live and die as liabilities. Let's take responsibility. Let's wake up and take responsibility. Going to them that say, who says it? The Father. How God anointed Jesus. But he went on a fast to return empowered. He wasn't waiting that somebody I know be empowered. Who do we go to? We go to Jesus. I baptize you unto water, me with water unto repent. There's one coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, and how do we get there? On the altar of prayer, couple with fasting, time and again. On the altar of prayer, couple with fasting once and again. Somebody was, they were in a bus, eight of them, and then not knowing they were on their way to their dead end because they were in the vehicle of ritual killers. And so they offloaded them like sand at the shrine. Praise God. <laughs> when they were going, this one refused to sleep because they blew something like this and all them slept. They say, why are you not sleeping? Can you force me to sleep? I'm not sleeping. Amen. <laughs> they pass all of them into the slaughter. But this one, they brought one pigeon, moved it around his head, the pigeon died. Ah. So they took another pigeon from the pot, white pigeon, because maybe the black one can't do it. <laughs> they moved it around his head, he died. Amen. <laughs> He said, where do you come from? He said, ask the people who brought me here where they brought me from. And then a flyer came out of his pocket and landed in front of the shrine. He said, what's that? He said, look at it. He said, he didn't know how the thing came out of his pocket. When the man picked it, he saw my picture. He said, ah, please return all these people. Return them. Eight of them walk into liberty. They were to be slaughtered. We are talking about power, not talking about phonetics, homiletics. I'm talking about gesture and uh, uh, twisting your tongue. Rope! They walked into liberty free of charge. They were urged upon them to leave. No devil will torment your life again. Arm robbers accosted one of us who was coming from Abuja, and the arm robber going to the car, to the bus. Bring everything you have now. And with a gun pointed to their head. So. Now, the air piece of the tape was here and it came out. And he heard me speaking. He stood. He said, who took something from this man? <laughs> he said, can I have the tape, please? Got the tape. Called them the following week. I was jammed up out to the tape from you the other time. How can I get more of this tape? Amen. I'm talking about raw power, not uh, mechanical, mechanized power. Not software power. <laughs> raw power from heaven. In the name of Jesus, someone is returning supernaturally empowered tonight. <laughs> now, wait a minute. God's word is the principal carrier of his power. I'm trying to tell you something because most people are just trying to wait for one wind to move from somewhere. When God's word moves into your life, it empowers you to deliver the subject matter empowers your life. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God. Unto salvation. To everyone that believes. So when you believe the revealed word, 
you are empowered to manifest it in your life. As many as receive him, to them gave you power to manifest our sense of God, even to as many as believe on his name. John 1.12. So when you receive a revelation of the truth, in truth and in deed, not looking for what to preach, in truth and in deed, not getting excited about the revelation, you are empowered to deliver that insight in your life. Ah, please follow me carefully. Jesus was teaching and the power of God was present to heal them. Luke 5, 17. Everyone that was sick came to hear him and to be healed. And they were healed, every one of them. Luke 6, 17 to 19. Please see the world as a principal channel of empowerment and take advantage of it. It's so important. People have not come to realize that, but that's the truth. Jesus, in Luke chapter 4, verse 33 to 36, there was this demon possessed person, and they cried out with a loud voice, <laughs> saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. That's power, a mission of power. God had a mission of power. And Jesus rebuked them, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. When the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a world is this? For with authority and power. So you know, his, his authority and power is domiciled in his world. With authority and power commanded he the unclean spirits, and they came out. The authority and power of God resides in his word. The authority, you receive the word, you are given authority and power to execute it. We had a situation, I think it's 1979, I can't remember precisely. This demon possessed person. He was mad, and Jesus delivered him the previous night in our crusade. And then they brought him to the camp. And then the following day, the evil spirit came and gripped him, and he became violent. Everybody was holding him down. But I went with a word when they called me. The angels that kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day of judgment. Of the great day. So I said, leave him. You know, I received this word. It's in my spirit. So I've been given authority to execute it. Leave him. And they left him. Ah, but can't move. Paralyzed. And I pointed my finger at him. You are one of those, um, those who broke jail. You are kept in utter darkness. What are you doing here? <sighs> All the demons left. All the demons left. That strange demonic energy departed from him. He became cool and calm. <laughs> By the authority of the world. The authority of the world. Don't leave your life to chance. If you do, you don't have a chance. You are, you are confronted with deadly spirits. you better get robbed with power. Amen. The word is the principal channel of empowerment for the saints. In the beginning was the word, the word was God and the word was God. And as many as received him, the word, he gave power. 
to manifest as sons of God. That where the secret of empowerment is. Every change of story, testimony, and scriptures made the individuals responsible. So you don't wait for a change of story. You take steps to enforce your change of story. Oh, we are no one. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. The word you receive and engage with in faith is what changes your story. The word is self-empowered, so it's not looking for power somewhere. Else. Do anything. Now, let me tell you what every revelation does. Every revelation that knocks on the door of your heart is simply saying, are you interested in this deal? <laughs> Hello? Is that Joshua? Hello? Is that Benedicta? Hello? Is that James? Hello? Is that David? Are you interested in this deal? No. Thank you. Hello? Is that Zechariah? Hello? Is that Ronke? <laughs> Are you interested in this deal? No. I don't want anybody to brainwash me. <laughs> Just uh, brain dirty. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Who is speaking? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The world. You open, I come in. You shut your door, I pass on. Do you stay forever knocking on somebody's door? No. Hello, anybody inside? No. You ring the bell? No. You knock the door? No. Anybody inside? Thank you. <laughs> you go. That's how to be empowered. I don't know how many times God has knocked on your door and there's no way, no answer. You say, Jesus, go somewhere else. I have more important things to do. <laughs> go somewhere else. He said, Man, be no, I've gone somewhere else. Joe, make you nervous. I made a mistake. What am I knocking on your door for? You are also Jesus. <laughs> You are your own Jesus. Now, what we took look, looking at tonight, I just try to do that to help you see how to continue to get empowered. You just open your heart to the world, and it keeps changing your story level by level. I got empowered for health and vitality in 1979, the month of July. From Matthew 8, 17, I received it hook, line, and sinker. And I screamed, yeah, I can never be sick. Now, am I sick? They said, don't say that. Anything you truly believe, you freely say. Whatever you can't freely say, you don't, you don't fully believe. Anything you truly believe, you freely declare. Anything. You truly believe, you freely declare anything, anything you can freely, openly, boldly, unrepentantly declare, you have not believed. He said, when did you tell them? Immediately. The next minute I went, I said, you know something? I met Jesus from Matthew 8, 30, Matthew 8, 17. It was an eruption. And I screamed, yay, I can never be sick. Ah. There is nothing God tells me to do that I don't say it openly. I don't have a problem. <laughs> Amen. Openly. Some people are very upset. That's their choice. If I say my name is David and you're offended, will I now change the name? <laughs> I say I can never be sick. Say, Why? Okay, you'll be sick. <laughs> Amen. This journey, oh, it's, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. 
Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, does say the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. My counselor asked me, David, what are you looking forward to in your marriage? Hitch free marriage. Mm. You have come again. Who have you seen that had hitch free marriage? I may not see anybody, but that's what the word says. I don't see anybody. Who have you seen that live the sickness free life? I don't, I'm not looking for them. Or not. I'm not a census officer. <laughs> but the word tells me somebody already paid the price for my total health. Amen. So I was well before I was born. <laughs> no, it's not something we are trying to negotiate or arrange. It has been settled. And it's settled where? In heaven forever. If you are waiting to see somebody and you can't see somebody, then you're in trouble. Just see God. <laughs> Amen. So. Tonight, I want to open you to something before we close, which is one of the Satan taunting testimonies of this ministry. Amen. Access to heaven's order of prosperity, which is only made possible by the giving anointing. What do I call it? The given anointing. If you check in scriptures, grace and power are interchangeably used. With great power, give the apostles witness of Christ Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great power, great grace. Great power, great grace. To their power, I be a record, talking about the Macedonian church. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, talking about their very strange given life. Then he went to verse 7. As you abandon everything, see that you abandon this grace also. So you see how grace and power get interchangeably used. So the given anointing can not also be called the given grace. This particular anointing is only accessible from the world. It is the world that transmits that unction into people's life. Because we are empowered for wealth on the basis of the covenant. And the covenant is as stipulated in scriptures. So we are empowered by the covenant, by the revelation of the covenant for wealth. We are empowered by the revelation of the covenant for wealth. We are empowered by the revelation of the covenant for wealth. There is no other way. You, you, there is no other way. If the covenant is what empowers people for wealth and the covenant is as stipulated in scriptures, that means it is by the revelation of the covenant we are empowered for wealth. Is that simple? Please, is that simple? Or is fasting affecting anybody here? <laughs> fasting is supposed to open us to revelation, not to make us sleep. I fasted my way to that revelation, sir. I fasted my way. That is three concrete days, not uh, this passage that you break in the evening. <laughs> Amen. Show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. It was so real to me than real money. There was no way to make me think lack or want from the 22nd of March 1982 
It will take more than one devil, and there's only one, to make me think, lack, want, borrow. No. By the revelation of the covenant. So there is no point in saying someday I know it, things will change. You better buy those books. Amen. Don't borrow them. Go and buy them. I said to, I told people, I told one of our leaders today, I said, somebody who run around begging for money, ask them when they come, do you give tithe? Uh, uh, uh. Do you give offering? Have you ever extended a helping out to anybody in your life? There is no way to escape poverty. I don't care how much anybody earns. You can be MD of 10 different banks. You know what I mean? One in Nigeria, one in Saudi Arabia, one in uh, Australia, one. You will be poor, poorer than a pauper. If you are a believer and must be empowered for wealth, and you have not got a revelation of giving, which begins with tithing, kingdom investment, helping the needy, you are far from the place. Far. Now, if this papa lay hands on your head, breathe on you, you know he breathes on me. <laughs> Amen. I lined up a number of people that were HIV negative in Uganda. The Lord gave me a heavy revelation on the breath of life that I carry. So they came on one by one. <sighs> Many of them clean out. Now, I can't breathe that to you for prosperity. <laughs> Believe me, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, you know. <laughs> prosperity, you will give and give, and God must accept before you can prosper. Not that you give anyhow. Papa said we should give. Get you? <laughs> you know, I saw you as a poor man, so I give you this. Jesus said, you have wasted it. You must not see anybody as a poor man. See yourself as given opportunity to assist somebody in need. Can I hear your amen? I think I should leave you alone tonight. Or oh, do we still have more time? <laughs> you know, I want to damage your religion and give you access to reality. How many want to prosper here? No, tell me the truth. Do you want to prosper? <laughs> Now, you need the giving grace that is transmitted only by revelation. Only by what? Revelation. Now, let me tell you this. I have never begged from the day that I caught that light. I was just naturally empowered to enjoy doing it even in the midst of lack. So it's, it's, it's all left to us. I took my mentor's book, The Law of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland, God's Will is Prosperity by uh, Mommy Gloria Copeland, in case the husband forgets something, she will remember. <laughs> and with my Bible, I said, Jesus, I'm in this room, I'm going nowhere. You must show me what you show them. And when life came up, now, let me tell you what happened. I got to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18 and God stood out. My son, David. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. Come and say, no respect. <laughs> One can fast himself into deep poverty. <laughs> because if you don't control your fast, you may get sick. You now need to spend money to, to restore yourself. <laughs> Amen. It has no respect for fasting. He said, my prosperity plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. And I'm, Jesus is here in heaven now. I'm telling you raw. Quoted raw. I don't have to read it. I don't have to read a book to remember my name. Amen. That was my name, oh. Because we have some people in Nigeria now can't remember anything. He <laughs> said, what's your name? Ah, my name. Do I have a name? <laughs> because a 
God comes in your life, you so lie, you lie and lie that you don't even know the limitation. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me tell you, this NGO bill that they are playing with, you know, you know the target, the church. They can't understand how the church will be at 38 University. They can't understand. So let's put a GOB. So what? Put a GOB. <laughs> you think the house of rap is the one doing B? It is we who are doing B. It's the people. It's the people, sir. And Joe B, so you do I join your village, you know. Government will now come and uh, collect it. This government has steal money every day. <laughs> if you remove what they have stolen, there's nothing left with them. Uh, if we have more than five percent that are not stealing, that are major thieves, then it's a big success. <laughs> you now collect people's money, you collect universities' money. The one you are running is not working. Okay, on what basis? I've been on Ronuni. I don't understand. Is it a police state? Then they will now decide what you are going to spend it for. Ah. <laughs> they will soon send those things to us so you can read it yourself. You now see madness of a strange order. But I know I respect those people in the House of Rep. They know how to deal with certain things. Is that the way to rule a nation? <laughs> we are here. You are enjoying power 24 hours. Water is flowing 24 hours. Which one? Where do they have that? No, 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 no. Glory to God. Country has changed long time. People are so enlightened. No buffon. We come and play games here. Yeah. God have mercy on them and let them repent on time before it's too late. <laughs> Giving is the gateway to a world of abundance. You are not interested? You are not interested. Hello? Say yes. Giving is the gateway to a world of abundance. I'm not interested. Thank you. <laughs> There is nothing you receive that can equal prosperity. It is what you give that equals prosperity. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Can I hear your amen? amen. Somebody excited? If you have a relation in the House of Rep, tell them NGO bill is the maddest bill that anybody ever promulgated in this country. So they should kill it there before it causes kata in the society. It's an advice in case you have anybody there. <laughs> Glory to God. There was no way Abraham could have given Isaac naturally. He was empowered to so do. Come and say empowered. You waited for a child for 25 years. The child finally came. He's now 14 years old. And you are going to slaughter him. Abba. But thank God he didn't tell Sarah. Sarah would have boxed Abraham to death. <laughs> you know that the woman can fight. If he ever mentioned Sarah, you know, I'm taking Isaac to go and slaughter him. Eh? He would take the knife while you are trying to get ready. And, oh! Because this man has gone mad. <laughs> Amen. There are certain givings you can't do in your life except to empower. There are certain givings we can't do in our lives except to empower. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, but this I say that sweat spiritually shall reap spiritually. It has sweat bountifully, shall reap bountifully. So everyone has a purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or not as a necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound 
towards you. So that you have in all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. That is what giving culminates into. That's what giving results into. You have in all sufficiency in all things. That's you. That's you. Can I tell you what that does? When giving takes you up, you naturally sustain it. Nobody wants to lose what he knows how to make happen. So when you are raised by giving, giving naturally becomes your lifestyle. And there is no way to be raised except you comply with the covenant requirements. There is no other way. Thank you, Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other way. It's a proving now. These are the things to do. If you are not ready to prove the truth, you will never have proofs. It is the truth we prove that empowers us to command proofs. Amen. Prove me now. Put this truth to work. And see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and I rebuke the river of your sin. They shall not come near what you have. Prove me now. Prove me now. So you don't prosper by how much you earn. You prosper by how much you work in the covenant. You prosper by how much you work in the covenant. You prosper by how much you work in the covenant. No one here will ever beg to eat. Your generation will not be mistaken for beggars. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is the raw truth. And the only way to find the terms of the covenant is to study the word and rest on the Holy Ghost to help you assess the secret, not the stories. Unto us is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, all these things are in parables. They are mere stories to them. It is the mysteries that change their story, not the stories. It is the mystery of the kingdom, the mystery of scriptures that change our story, not the stories. We've had enough stories. Let's now go for the mystery. And you see how things will start changing. Let me conclude by saying anything you give to help anybody is helping yourself. He that giveth to the poor shall not lack. So you are getting more from it than whatever anybody else may get. Blessed is the man that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the day of trouble. Amen. Psalm 41, verse 2. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. So what are you, you are getting a law from it. One sickness can wipe away all your savings in one moment. But blessed is the man that considers the needy. The Lord will deliver him in the day of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And that will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. He said, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. He will make all his bed in sickness. Get up, go to work, my friend. What are you doing here? He will make all his bed. Stand up, I want to make your bed. When you say stand up, you are, you are healed. Amen. <laughs> now, for considering the plague of the needy, he comes out of crisis. He's preserved and kept alive. So he's getting from it. Okay, bring me all the time to my storehouse. I'm proving that if I will not open you the windows of heaven so that we are about that are struggling, you are just being drenched with God's blessings from the windows of heaven. And I'll put you at a place that you are, don't have room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the Lord for your sake. Look at those lineups for doing one thing. You know what the Lord said to me? Far be it that I, the Almighty God, we depend upon your wretched purses. But your wretched purses depend on me for replenishing. There is nothing that we give that God will not be dancing. It is from what he gave us we gave in the first instance. Amen. So it, it, it's not doing anything to God but giving God more responsibility. With that understanding, you won't need anybody running after you. God does not need me for anything, but I need him for everything. That's my driving motto. Anything 
anything he tells me to do is to my advantage. There is nothing God gaining from me doing it or not doing it. When I do it, I get blessed by it. When I don't do it, it's me that knows. God doesn't know. Glory to God. God doesn't know. If you don't give to that needy, somebody somewhere else will give it to him. One of our sons here had um, a, a new child. And then everybody was greeting him and passing by. Somebody didn't know. He said, excuse me, what's your bill like? <laughs> what's your name? You don't need my name. Just let me pay your bill. Glory to God. You don't need somebody else will do it. You see a vehicle that had an accident, you drive by. Somebody is coming next to you. Then the van after you. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What's happening here? What's happening here? He carries the wounded man, the injured man, blood all over him. He's rushing to the hospital. They say, what? I will pay the money. He doesn't know him. He doesn't know where he's coming from. God has somebody else to replace you. Well, you don't take advantage of what he makes available to you. My prayer is this. May the word you have heard increase your given life to another level. Yeah. Rise to your feet. Lift up your two hands and specifically cry out for the given anointing. Will somebody do that? To their power and bear record and beyond their power. Even in their poverty, they were given beyond themselves. They were given beyond themselves and they gave their way out of lack and want into realms of supernatural blessing. They gave their way out of lack and want into realms of supernatural prosperity. They gave their way out of lack and want into realms of supernatural prosperity. Is somebody praying that prayer from the depth of his heart? Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Somebody's praying that prayer. Giving is the gateway to a world of supernatural prosperity. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Lift up those two hands. For everyone who has asked for that grace from his heart, receive it now. I decree the release of the giving anointing upon your life. Your children's children will never beg. Begging will never be associated with your lineage. In the name of Jesus. May you receive wisdom for giving with discretion. May you be a sower of seed, not a scatterer of seed. May you receive wisdom for priority in your given life. And thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering, everybody. And be seated, please. Glory to God. Before we partake of the communion, there are people here tonight who need to receive Jesus and be enlisted into the covenant. Amen. If you are here tonight, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and become a candidate for the covenant. That's where it begins. If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and he is according to the promise. Wherever you are tonight, both here in Kenan at the U Chapel, and across the Zona Fellowship Centers, Lagos, and Environ, I'd like to pray with you. Not just to become a candidate of the covenant, but to become a member of the household of God and secure eternity in grand ties. Anyone here that wants to be saved, stand to your feet quickly. Please stand to your feet and God bless you. Stand to your feet and God bless you. Stand to your feet and God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Don't let this moment pass you by. This is your opportunity to have a new beginning in your life. And God bless as you do. There are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. You want to rededicate, you want to reconnect back to God. Because a broken branch of a tree is dead. It's only a matter of time. You want to reconnect. You know that's not the way it used to be. You want yourself back with Jesus. Wherever you are, stand to your feet also and I pray with you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. Wherever you are in this sanctuary, please stand. 
and across our various zona centers. Please stand. I'll be praying for you in a moment before we partake of the communion. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody stand in place, both in the first and second call. Can I request that you please make your way quickly down here? And in all the other centers, please go towards the altar. The pastors are waiting to receive you. And Jesus will save your soul and you'll be enlisted in the covenant. And more importantly, you have eternity secured in Christ. Please come. Anybody can still stand now, please. Anybody can still stand and join us. Wherever you are, you can still stand and join us. God bless you. You can still stand and join us. Wherever you are, this is your chance for a change of story. You can still stand and join us. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. This is your chance for a new beginning. In all the centers, please approve the altar area right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody in front, please bow your heads for now. You can complete your forms later on. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer after me, saying, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are not forgiven. I'm not a child of God. I'm restored back to the faith. And thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I'm not a candidate for the covenant. I'm not a candidate of the covenant. I've now secured eternity with Christ at the end of my journey. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Your struggles are over. Welcome to the overcomer's world. In the name of Jesus. If anything has heard you burn, either to I command your liberty right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please turn this way. You give out your uh, cards at that door with the church officials that are going with you. Shall we all rise, please? Amen. Amen. Say with me, what I receive is never equal to prosperity, but what I give. Tonight, at this communion table, I tap into the giving grace of Christ, who gave and gave and gave himself. As I partake of this communion tonight, I receive this given grace upon my life. Now, let me tell you this. Don't ever think some witches in your village are responsible for your state. No. The covenant is stronger than every devil in hell. He said, whatever can stop the day and the night from exchanging position cannot alter my covenant. That's God speaking. That's what he said to me when I screamed, Yeah, I can never be poor. Jeremiah 33. And you read that in verse 18. You read that in verse 12. If you can break my covenant of the day, verse 20, and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season. Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and will deliver it. The priests, my ministers. Who are the priests? We are. We have been redeemed as priests and kings and to reign on the earth. You know which in your village can break the covenant. No hired witch from the next villages. All of them join together. Including witch of Endor or witch of uh, Queen of Sheba. All of them join to Can't alter the covenant a bit. Stop reading religious meaning to your status. Be covenant conscious. Everybody in my family, that's how we are. It's not true. 
somebody's family. Nobody has ever built a house or buy a car. You had the testimony. He read the book Breaking Yeshua Courses and plunged himself into God. And uh, uh, he said he has his cars. I don't know what he's doing with them anyway. <laughs> and built two houses. Between 2012 and now, don't give room to the devil with unbiblical explanation. Get into the covenant and you see how weak the devil is. How many want to tap into the giving grace of Christ? Lift up your two hands and call for it. Let the steward steady abortion. Call for that access. I tap into the unlimited giving grace upon Christ tonight. Everybody tap into it. Everybody tap into this. Everybody tap into this. Jesus, I tap into this tonight. The giving grace of Christ because the life of the flesh is in the blood. I tap into your order of giving grace, Jesus, tonight. In Jesus' precious name. Please check that 2 Corinthians 8 3. Let's start from one. Very interesting. He said, I want you to understand the grace of God that was upon the churches of Macedonia. Now, watch verse 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, there was abundance of joy in them in spite of their deep poverty, which abandoned to the little of their liberality. What a complex. What a contrast, sorry. I mean, very poor people, but abundant in their liberality. To their power, I bear record. He said, I'm telling you, my name is Paul. To their power, I bear record. And beyond their power, they were begging us to receive the gift to bless the suffering people in Jerusalem. These are suffering people here. They brought their clothes and their shoes. They are walking barefooted. Paul said, why? He said, we are empowered. <laughs> it is that kind of power that's coming on your life. Amen. Somebody believes that? I saw somebody many years ago in the early days of our church in Kaduna. I said they should call him because it wasn't joyful when we were singing. And we were very few so we can see everybody. So I said, call me that man that's number three to that window after service. And I said, what's going on? Are you, are you okay, sir? He started crying. He said, what to eat when we get home? I don't know. So, and my money that time was very much, so I could put it in my pocket. <laughs> I collected everything. You see how much? I didn't know, sir. And I placed in his hand. I said, this is the last time you will bother about what to eat in your life. Okay, is it, you, what are you going to eat? I know. <laughs> he will supply my needs according to his riches and glory. Life is exciting and fulfilling. There's a young man in our university here who said, I've been a sponsor since he was 14 years old. You don't know him. You better lose up. He said, me. No uncle is going to help you for anything. For prosperity, you will help yourself. Amen. Uncle can't give on your behalf. No. If not that, if my father were a liberal man, my position cannot be less. <laughs> it's liberal enough. He sent you to school. Abi, what's the liberality? Did you pay your school? <laughs> Amen. Things have changed for you. Amen. Now, if you're in this church and you don't prosper, they will mock you. Every mockery of the devil in your life is converted to glory. Yeah. Read books. So this is only 45 minutes teaching. You don't do much. It only whets your appetite. Go and look for it if you're interested. And sit down and study it. And get yourself out to where you should be. No one of us will be a disappointment to God. Yeah. The price for your wealthy living is fully paid. He said, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. So what else will he do? 
Father, we receive this as your flesh. Jesus, we receive this as your flesh and your blood. We partake of this to live like you. Amen. Empower us to live like you. Amen. Empower our given life to be like yours. Amen. Empower our spiritual life to be like yours. Amen. Empower our covenant work with God to be like yours. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that came here with any sickness, that sickness departs from you. Amen. You came with any operation of the devil, you are set free right now. In Jesus name so shall it be Amen. this is the flesh and the blood of Jesus everyone partaking of this today is empowered to live like Christ Amen. in all areas of life Amen. give the Lord a big hand and get sick Please approach this table with all sense of mission. Jesus, empower my given life to be like yours. Empower my spiritual life to be like yours. Empower my prayer life to be like yours. Empower my covenant work to be like yours. Approach the table like that. And Lord Jesus, take this sickness out of my body. It doesn't belong to me. You have paid the price already. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can run through a trip and leap over the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock of, of my, my salvation. salvation. I can run through a trip and leap over the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free, I am free, I am free from condemnation. Hallelujah. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can run through a tomb, I can run through a tomb, I live over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free, I am free, I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can run through a tomb, I live over the world. I'm working, working miracles. I live a life 
offering everybody lift up your two hands and give him thanks what a night what a moment in God's presence what an eye-opening session in God's presence what a change of story for everyone who has received the Word of God in truth tonight give him thanks and praise in Jesus precious name we have prayed in the name of Jesus we have prayed two very quick reminders this Saturday, we have a mountain of prayer, and it's a 30 minutes extension to um, the regular covenant hour of prayer time. So get prepared for it. And on Sunday, there shall be priestly release of blessings. Amen. After this manner, shall the priest bless the people. And I will put my name on them as a seal of confirmation of the blessing. Every blessing proclaimed on you this Sunday will be stamped on you with the seal of the name of the Lord. <laughs> Many don't ever have the privilege of priestly blessings, but you're going to have that again this coming Sunday. Every time God's apostles who represent the priests of the Old Testament and prophets release a blessing, God is committed to confirm it. When they release it under the anointing that he has put upon their life, he confirms it. Whatever has stood as a spare and a cause, blessing is the cure for all causes and all spares. Under that showers of blessing, every cause shall be broken. Amen. Every seed shall be over. Amen. And Jesus' name shall be glorified. Amen. So spread the news around. It's a prophetic service of prophetic blessings. It's a service of prophetic blessings. Call all of your converts and everybody to be under that blessing. It's going to be an awesome time. And also you shall be unveiling what November represents. And then uh, we're working our way to Shiloh. It's all happening at the same time. Praise God. Nobody should miss this Saturday morning. Please be there. Lift up your two hands. Give God thanks and praise. If anything happened to you tonight, just give God thanks for it. If light broke out in your direction, give God thanks for it. 